ESPN Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell tonight at 8 Eastern. That tight National League Central race a matchup there with Albert Pujols and the St. Louis Cardinals facing Derek Lee and the Cubbies. ESPN 8 Eastern tonight. That Monday Night Baseball presented by Holiday Inn moves to ESPN 2. It's Ryan Howard and the Phillies taking on Manny Ramirez and the Dodgers. That sounds so weird to say. At 10 Eastern time for more, log on to ESPN.com. Final stages of the Centurion Boats at the Glen. Watkins Glen, New York, 17 laps to go. Kyle Busch, the leader, opening up a little gap on Tony Stewart. But sitting here just wondering if Kyle Busch has enough fuel to go to the finish of this race. He stopped at lap 56-57, so 33 laps to go. They've had about two and a half laps of caution. What he should think? be able to make it no problem. I think that's well within their window. Although, Kyle Busch is one of the hardest drivers out there, and he's not really good at saving gas, I would think. This guy's, when you're in the throttle, you're using gas. But you know what? I've watched his times, and they've slowed up a little bit. I mean, he was really, really booking it here about five laps ago. He's backed it up probably a tenth or so. I think he's trying to conserve a little bit, and he's still as quick as anyone in the field. Well, I know the man who can tell us. The man who's covering Kyle Busch's pit. Mike Massaro is down there. What are they saying, Michael? Well, I can tell you what they're saying, but I'm not sure if I can tell you. Uh, they're telling him to save fuel. They seem to be right on the edge, but as we reported earlier in the day, they've got an experimental carburetor, one that they didn't get to try during practice because of other engine issues, so they're not really sure exactly how far they can go, but they are telling Kyle to save fuel. It's going to be close, that's for sure. Meanwhile, as Joe Gibbs Racing teammate Tony Stewart, well, fuel's not necessarily the issue. Handling is. He said he needs the car to turn a little bit better. Last time down pit road, they made a track bar adjustment and an air pressure adjustment. It seems to be helping, but still, he's got a ways to go before he reels in his teammate. Shannon? Yeah, Mike. Ryan Newman right behind Tony Stewart. Last pit stop was on 58. Just asked the crew if they could make it to the end, and I got idle nose across the board. So right now, Ryan Newman solidly in third. This team has said that they are going to scratch claw their way into the chase. Right now, 15th in the points. So this is a good day for Ryan Newman if he can maintain that third. Jamie? It's been a good day for Martin Truex Jr., who's right behind him as well. Who's looking, Marcos Ambrose looking to the inside. That's Martin Truex Jr. in the one, and that's actually Juan Pablo Montoya who got around him. But Martin announcing on Friday, it's official. He has re-signed with DEI to run in 2009. Well, extra hop in his step as well as the teams. They're excited about the effort their driver's putting in. Their goal is to be top five, all five races before the chase. Shannon? Well, Jamie, Marcos Ambrose said coming into this race, the biggest thing important thing was to get that car comfortable. He knew he was going to have to fight for his track position. He said, even if we're not the fastest car on the track, if it's comfortable, then I can move through the field. Now, Juan Pablo Montoya right behind Marcos Ambrose. This is a great run for that team. He finished 40th in this race last season. Even though he won on the road course at Sonoma last season, Juan Pablo Montoya said, you know, we won on strategy. Right now, I think this team is good enough where we can actually beat them with our performance. Dave. Denny Hamlin, uh, as you uh, come in, and will come into the picture here, running in the seventh position. Denny complaining that he's had brake fade, which has uh, led to losing the front end of the race car. On fuel mileage, they can make it to the end of the race. If the race ends on lap 90, no overtime or the 11 might be really close, according to crew chief Mike Ford. Behind him, Kevin Harvick questioned whether they uh, should have come down pit road last time and maybe took on four tires with higher air pressures. I just checked with Todd Barrier, his crew chief, and he said, you know, we didn't do that. But now Kevin went out and he's running the fastest times of the race so far. So 29 going good now, Mike. And the 99, Dave, Carl Edwards, really one of those guys trying to milk his fuel mileage. He last stopped on lap 52. Speaking with his team, they said, well, we don't know if we can make it, but if the caution flags do fall for us, we can go the distance. But they, are, they have really no choice but to try right now. The 48 of Jimmy Johnson was dealt a, a bit of a, a bad card earlier in this race. Midway through, had a cut left rear tire and really forfeited a lot of very good track position. So far, though, they've rallied back for really a good run. They've maintained their poise and could turn in a very solid top five finish if they continue their forward progress. Shannon? Yeah, Mike, A.J. Allmendinger, this is a great run for that 84 team. They're good to go on fuel to the end. Been very quiet over the radio. A.J. said one of his bad worst habits is that he gets too aggressive. If he can stay calm, then he feels like he can have a great run, and this is a great run for that 84 today. Dave? Shannon, right behind them, Ron Fellows, road course specialist in that 0-1 car. I asked Dan Stillman, his crew chief, can he wrestle the car and drive it fast? Just a little bit tight was Dan's answer, but I think he'll be good. They'll be a little bit close on fuel. Maybe, again, overtime would be their only issue. Doc? 
All right, David, so uh, one thing we're noticing watching A.J. Allmendinger here. Oh, look at this. Ryan Newman. Hello, Newman. That's not good. Weren't we just talking about that? Oh, look out. Oh, man. Oh. Hey, clear up, clear up. No caution flag on the course yet, just in that section well, of the they track. Well, one bad. Get a caution. Now it's out. Oh, man. Wow. And boy, he said driver's side first right oh. at the track, and they all miss him. Unbelievable. Oh, and you know what? That's a tough spot on this racetrack because where they have spotters around the racetrack. Can you get it fired? I get 77. Stop pushing. It's hard for the spotter to see down at the very bottom of that hill at that exit of that corner. You know what, guys? This is interesting now because this gives uh, Marcos Ambrose and Juan Pablo Amontoya an opportunity to reset start with Kyle Busch and Tony Stewart who were much quicker than they were on the previous laps. It's going to bunch them all up. This is going to be really a shootout. And you see his teammate now trying to push Ryan Newman that same horse around trying to get that car fired up. And yeah, buddy, he's trying. Looks like he just can't get the thing to go. Let's we'll see what happens here. Looks like it's going to refire. Should fire any second here. That car is not starting guys. It just won't get going at all. How about that for teamwork? He might have accidentally hit the kill switch on the steering wheel. That could happen. This is tricky turn one once again. I mean, when you come in that hard, you just got to believe the car got in the wheel hop and it slid off the course. And then he's right back in the racing line at the exit of that corner, and the traffic is scattering. Carl Edwards did an incredible job. This is from Juan Pablo Montoya. 12 is off. Dig, dig on the bottom and dig, dig, dig. Beautiful. Keep digging. Still green. Still green. And now from Ron Fellows. 12 six on your outside. Whoa. That's. Wow. You're all clear. You're all Not clear. You're all there. Scary. I have to go get a new uniform after that. Well, a couple laps of caution might take fuel to the finish out of the mix for some of these leaders. Though then again, that's, as Dave said, if the race finishes at lap 90.